Welcome back to Box Delights. Today we're doing something a little unusual. I'm showing you very much an early prototype. So much so I don't have any of the artwork. I'm using a standard deck of cards to <laughs> demo this. Um, hand drawn a board out here, all very rough. So this is a little insight into early stages of how we design, prototype, develop an upcoming board game. In this case, Molly House from Whirly Gig Games, designed by Joseph Kelly and Cole Whirly. And today I'm showing you the solo rules designed by me, Richard Wilkins, Ricky Royal, here on Box of Delights. All right, let's get into it. So I just want to show you how a round of play works. Obviously, all the components here, please <laughs> just forgive it completely. This is just all very rough. I mean, there's, there's pe pencil and rubbings out here all over because this is very much in development. But... The game is currently crowdfunding and I wanted to give you an idea about what the solo game will look like while that campaign was still running. And do bear in mind, obviously this is early days, right? Very early days. The design I'm pretty much happy with, so you'll get an idea of the flow of the game and what the game is about. But, you know, development, playtesting will undoubtedly alter stuff. I mean, I know already, for example, I want to get an extra set of cards in here that I've been sketching out this morning all right but i'm going to keep this short as short as possible and dive straight into gameplay so we're playing molly house this is 1600 1700s london so 17 18th century we are gentlemen who are using the colloquialism of mollies and we are attending molly houses to meet other gentlemen and we will dress up and have parties and behave in a way that is socially unacceptable for the time so there is a constable and now the constable's going around trying to catch us, arrest us. And unfortunately, the penalties of the time were severe. Pillory, you know, remember the stocks where you put your head and your hands through? I think stocks just tie your feet, but pillory is head and arms. A bad enough punishment, but prison time and hangings as well. So you can actually go and find records from the Old Bailey at the time of the punishments that were handed out and transcripts from court cases. And yeah, it was considered a serious crime at the time. All right, so we're taking a lot of chances trying to avoid these constables by having festivities, parties, and that's actually where I'm going to begin the game. So I've, this is mid-game, right? This is not set up because I want to try and get you into it. And it's my turn. So I'm the soloist. And I've got a hand of cards. And they'll look like a standard set of cards, okay? So they'll be what you recognise, values from one to one to nine, actually, in four suits. There'll be a set of constable cards. I'm using tens and jacks to represent constables. And again, there'll be eight cards of four suits. So I'd like tens and jacks, all right? Um, the constables are hidden within our stack of cards. This is our stack of cards. This is called the vice deck. All right. When both constables, so two cards of three of the four suits have been revealed, that's when the week, each round of the game is called a week. That's when the week will end and we'll kind of do a little bit of a reset. We'll do some scoring and then we'll move on to the next week. And there's a maximum of four weeks in the game. The game can end a little sooner, but we'll talk about that shortly. All right, so what does the festivity look like? So you've got a hand of cards. Now in the solo game, you've got this fan card and you've got some jokers. So you won't see these in the multiplayer game. But the idea really of when you're playing the game is you're trying to create uh, poker hands. Now, the queens and kings in the game, I'm using these as placeholders for the mollies. In the final game, you'll have cards that have been wonderfully drawn by artist Rachel Ford. And each one of those mollies, so again, there's two cards in each of the four suits, eight cards in all, I'm using kings and queens as placeholders for those, will have a poker hand that we as a collective group of players will need to, to try and create, like a full house or a six card run. So that's why you're using these familiar looking cards, all right? Now, during the course of the game, you're gonna be trying to share, you've got, everyone's hands are hidden, but you're trying to share information about your hand. You can't openly say, I've got this card, and I've got that card, but 
you may be giving hints about which cards you want and revealing certain cards at certain times. So there's kind of a semi-cooperative element to the game because you want to reveal some cards to let other players know, OK, look, I can help you with this six card run. All right, but at the same time, you want to hide some of your cards because as you're trying to collectively form these sets, let's say a six card run, you're going to be scoring points for which cards you contribute. And if other players are contributing, you might want to snipe. So let's say they're trying to create a six card run of, say, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You might want to hide the fact that you've got a two, because in this game, the lower numbers take precedence. So we're trying to form a three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But then you may come in and snipe with that two that you've kept hidden that the other players didn't know about. And they'll be like, oh, you devil. And then suddenly you've scored three of the six cards. All right? And that's actually something I'm trying to do right now. So you've got cards that are hidden in your hand and cards that are revealed. Now, how did I emulate that in the solo game? Well, I've got this flag card. And you actually hold your hand of cards like, well, put the jokers down for now. Well, you hold your hand of cards like this. You've got cards that you've revealed to the AI or the dummy opponent that you're playing. Our dummy opponent's called the Rookery in this game. It's a little bit Victorian term, the Rookery, a little bit Dickensian. So it's not necessarily in the right era, but I kind of like it. <laughs> At the moment, I like the Rookery. I think probably I'll stick with the Rookery for now. So we're trying to, there's four stacks of cards up here that represent four other dummy players. And we collectively call this the rookery. So it's my hands and those four hands. Nick, so we're kind of emulating a five player game in the solo game. Anyway, these are cards that I've so far revealed to the rookery. And then if I flip my hand over, I've got a hidden side behind the fan here. These are cards that I've not revealed. So these are hidden cards. Okay, so I've actually got a molly here that I've kept hidden. We'll talk a little bit about why that's important a little bit later. But on my turn, I can travel to a place on the map here. This will be a map of all different locations. This is my player piece right now. And right in the middle is the molly house. These different actions around the board are joined by paths. I'm not sure you can see it terribly well, but they're joined by paths. And... We can travel one space or two space from the space we're in along these paths. And each one of these actions around the outside, actually there's a pillory here, but this has been removed in the current development version of the game, hence there's no paths to it. Uh, but each one of these actions will allow you to do things like grab new cards from a market here, this is Covent Garden, into your hand. Right? And this is how I've been able to kind of build up my hand of cards to a t two, three, four molly. Um, from a discord pile here at the Thief Taker's office, you can draw random cards at the Axe Hotel and Coffee House. You can discard and replace cards here at the Cruising Grounds. And then down here at St Andrew's Church, again, you can draw new cards into your hand. But also, you can accuse other players of being an informer. And here we can accuse rookery players, so one of these four columns, of being an informer. And again, I'll come back to that in a little bit. But thematically, these mollies, they can turn on their peers and become an informer and actually work for the constables and try and get the molly house closed, shut down and its patrons arrested. Right, so I'm going to head off to the molly house here. I don't want any new cards right now. Let's go and do a festivity. So when you attend the molly house, you get to play a card from your hand, a molly from your hand. So I've got the Queen of Diamonds. The Queen of Diamonds is, again, it's not going to be a king or a queen. It's going to be a molly of diamonds. And the suits are going to be different as well. So you've got hearts, cups, pentacles and fans. Okay. So Queen of Diamonds, the molly here is of diamonds, is going to be a six card run. That will be written on the card here. Right. So a six card run is what we're trying to achieve. So I play a molly down into the molly house. And now I've announced my intention to begin a festivity. Now, starting with me, I can play cards and they can be hidden or revealed cards. Doesn't matter. I can start playing cards from my hand. So let's say I choose to play the four. So I reveal the four of clubs and we're starting a festivity. Now, this part, these are called party rounds. OK, so we're going to go around the board. I'm going to use this little pawn here to say whose turn it is and decide 
who is going to attend the party. Right, so we'll start at the left. I'm going to move through each of these four columns. Now, we draw an AI card. This is the first thing. So let's have a look at the top AI card. On this AI card, there's a set of icons, X's and zeros, okay? These are called hot and cold icons. And there's two sets. There's a left-hand set and a right-hand set. In the first party round, we're going to use this set of icons here. And it's got three X's and one zero. Three hot and one cold. Okay? These actions up here, these are what the rookery uses when they're taking their turns. Which locations in London do they want to go to? All right, that's what these are about. But we're not doing that. We're just looking at the bottom of the card. Okay, three hot and one cold. I'm calling these behavior cards at the moment. I was thinking of calling them persuasion cards. But during a party round in the multiplayer game, other players will now be contributing cards towards the party, towards the festivity. Remember, I played the four of clubs. We're trying to create a six card run. Remember, that's what the Molly wants. In a multiplayer game, now people will be playing these cards and maybe you'll be trying to persuade other people. Oh, go on, play us this. Have you got this? And I saw you were holding a five earlier on. Come on, let's play the five and create this party together. Well, these behavior or persuasion cards, I'll stick with behavior. They represent that kind of little bit of table talk. So the hot ones, the X's, are kind of, yeah, go on, play a card, play a card. They're trying to convince them to play a card. The zeros, or the cold behaviors, they're like, hold back, hold back, don't, don't, you know, I don't want you to play that. So at the moment, you can see I've got quite a hot rookery. Three out of the four behavior cards are hot, and one is cold. So they're more inclined to play more cards. Now at this stage, I can decide who I want to play cards, or how I want to persuade them to play cards. Remember, I was trying to create a six card run. Now I know I've got four, five, six, seven, eight here, they'd be good. But this card, this card, I don't know what this card here is. If the rookery were gonna play a card, well, we're gonna go from left to right, they would play the bottom card and only the bottom card into the party this round. So I know they're gonna to look to play a seven, a five, and an eight and something I don't know what is. All right, they've not revealed that card to me. So a seven, a something, a five, and an eight. So this card here could mess things up. That's okay. As a group, you can play extra cards into the festivity, but they're not going to contribute towards the six card run. Instead, these are gonna go into what's called a gossip pile. So any cards that don't create the six card run, maybe we play seven or eight cards, Anything that doesn't contribute towards the six card run is going to go into the gossip pile and potentially inform the constables about our festivity, about our party. Now the idea here is that the more cards we have to try and create and the more cards that don't contribute towards a successful party are excess noise, you know, things that are drawing attention to the Molly house and alerting the constables, right, thematically. So this extra card will potentially be played, but be messing up. I mean, it could be a nine or a three. You know, it could be contributing, but it might not be. Chances are it will be. Remember, the cards run from one up to nine. But I don't know what it is. So let's see. I've got hot and I've got cold. I think I'm going to play the cold here. What I'm saying is I don't want you. I'm trying to discourage this column in the rookery from playing its cards. And then the three hots I'm going to play here, here, and here. So, although you've got four dummy players, you do have some control over what they're going to do. In fact, it's through the action we've been taking and the persuasions we've been, been doing, we, we've kind of manipulated the market and the discard pile and the decks and everything else to make this kind of turn out this way. I'll show you those kind of actions later. But it's looking good for a six card run type party. Now, before we move on, let's go back to those jokers. Remember, I had two jokers in my hand. The other thing is, these jokers can also persuade the rookery. I've got two jokers, and this is going to scale from four jokers for an easy game down to zero jokers for a hard game. I'm kind of playing middling right now with two jokers. If I don't like the decision a rookery column makes, I can play a joker into it and overrule, okay? But I've only got two of these, so I can do this twice per party. Okay, let's see then. So coming from here, what do we do? How do these cards work? Well, you flip them over, 
since we've got a hot one. Now remember, we want this seven to come out. Ideally, he would play this seven, but there is a backup over here, so I'm not too upset if they don't. All right, they've shown a two. If the number on this card is less than the number of cards they're holding, they will play the bottom card from their column. Hot cards are mostly zeros, ones, and twos. So two is less than, they're holding three cards, they're gonna play their seven. So they play and reveal their seven into the party. All right, cool, this gets discarded. Next, we have this column. Now remember, we, we weren't particularly interested in this column playing a card, but who knows, let's reveal it. This is a cold. Cold cards are mostly five upwards, but there's a few low numbers in here as well. But I think we're pretty good. I think the lowest it goes down to is two. There are some jokes, yes, two. Um, it is a two. Two is equal to, that's not good. So they're not gonna play a card, all right? So we're lucky, we're lucky. I mean, this is a short column at the moment. Part about playing the festivities or choosing when to play a festivity is knowing when these columns are looking right for you when the hands look big enough or small enough or the right cards are revealed, all right? Okay, so they're not gonna play a card, good. Next column we're gonna reveal is a zero, excellent. So they're playing their five into the party. So, so far we've got a four, five and a seven. Next one is a three. They've got five cards, three is less than five, they're playing their eight. Okay, so, so far we've got a four, five, seven, eight. Right, we've gone all the way along. Now it's back round to me. And I'm gonna reveal my three. Okay, so now we've got three, four, five, seven, eight. We just want the six to create our six card run. Then there's two sixes up here. We don't really want both of them. In Molly House, cards are considered high or low. Ones, twos, and threes are low. Fours and up are high. Every high card that ends up in the gossip pile, in excess of the low cards in the gossip pile, is going to move this track at the bottom here right to the right. And if it hits the end, then the game ends, the Molly House closes, and then we determine who wins the game. If you're an informer, players are either informers or non-informers. I'm a not an informer right now. If I wasn't an informer and the Molly House closes, I, I can't win. When the Molly House closes, only informers can win the game, and then it'll be the player with the most points, the informer with the most points. Okay. So I don't want the house to close right now. I'm not an informer. Now, I can switch. I can become an informer, in which case I still want points, so I still want parties to be successful. I still want the most points because some of these columns are bound to be informers. Odds are they are. I still want points, but I also want the Molly House to close. So I've got to kind of get high cards into the gossip pile. I've got to plant them and make the house close, but not too soon. I want to do it in such a way that I've already scored enough points that I think I can win the game. All right, so this is kind of dual way of playing. Also, if you're an informer, the rookery or other players can accuse you of being an informer, and that's when this hidden and revealed come into play and if you get caught as an informer you're going to suffer a penalty okay all right anyway i diverted right we've gone round to the second round so we've done our first party round now the second party round um so i've played my three what does the rookery do well this time this isn't the first party round it's subsequent party rounds and in subsequent party rounds we draw two cold and two hot so actually this one isn't too bad in terms of they're quite keen, so we're going to get too hot and too cold. And we want to decide where to place them. Now, these hands are getting quite short, so there's a good chance that they won't. Though, remember, a lot of these hots are zeros and ones. But I don't really want them to play a card. Right, I'm going to play a hot over here on this big column because I want them to play a six. I'm going to play a cold here because I don't want them to play this six. And then I've got a hot and a cold left. Well, I've got no clue as to what they are, so I'm just going to randomly place those, and we'll see what happens. All right, let's do the first the first round. So remember, we're going from left to right on the rookery. Let's see what they got. They've got, oh, it's a joker. Now, a joker, there's one hot joker and one cold joker. The joker here means I can choose the number on this. So I could make it 
a 10 if I wanted, or a 99 even, okay? Um, and that means they're not gonna play this card. Cool, happy with that. Right, we've got a cold column here. Hopefully they won't play anything from here. Oh, it's another joker, unbelievable. So again, I'm not. I'm gonna have them not play anything from this column. Right, we've got a cold here. So this should be good. It's a five, it's not less than two. So again, they're not playing this. Now what this means is every time they don't play a card, they're passing. So we'll place a pass token. And what that means is, once they've passed, they can't come back into the party. So at the moment, these three rookery columns have passed. It's just me and this right most rookery column left. Now I'm depending on them here because I need that six to create the six card row. So I want this to be low. It isn't, it's a five. So they're gonna pass as well. They're gonna try and mess up this party. Mm, that's a bit sus. So at this point, I'm gonna play one of my two jokers. I'm gonna play my two jokers and say, you're not passing, come on, stay into it. And okay, they'll say, okay, and they're gonna play their six. So that was a bad draw, that was very unlucky. There aren't many high behavior cards, but you get to look at the discard pile so you know what's come and what hasn't come, okay? So I ought to have known there was a five in there somewhere. Right, that's it, they've gone through. We've now got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a six card run, but I can now do a little bit of a cheeky snipe because We've got another party round. I've not passed yet. I'm going to play my two. Now what that means is, remember, low cards take precedence. So the six card run now doesn't include the eight. Now the bad news is this is going to go to the gossip pile, which is bad and potentially pushing the house towards closure. But the good news is I've managed to get an extra point in here from my two. But we can influence the gossip pile because as the week comes to an end, we can start influencing that gossip pile and I'll show you that shortly. All right, so another round of play, but these three have passed. We've still got this column. And remember, we're using two zeros and two X's. We're using this side of the decision tree. So we've got two, X, two zeros and two X's. Now as it goes, that's what's left. I want them to pass now. So I'm just gonna put a cold down here and the others we're not going to use, they go back on the on their respective draw piles. Right, because they've passed, they can't play now. So there's a chance they may still play. Let's flip it. It's an eight, they're passing, so they get a pass, and that's it. I'm going to pass on, the, the turn comes back to me, and I'm going to pass as well. Now, we tilt all the cards that have been revealed that are contributing towards the party. Remember, we're looking for a six card run with this molly. Queen of Diamonds is going to be a six card run okay so we've got two and it's low cards take priority two three four five six seven and that eight is not contributing so this eight will go to the gossip pile okay we'll come back to that in a minute the rest are going to score points now these cards will have stars on them and the stars will be the number of points now i know that ones and twos are going to give me one point Threes and fours, two, six to eights, three, and nine will score four points. And a molly, you could play a molly into a trick if I had a molly in my hand, and the molly is wild. So if they hadn't played their six and I had a molly in my hand, I could have played the, the molly and called it a six to complete the six card run, do you see? Uh, mollies are, are worth two. So I've got one, two, three, four, five points for my three cards. And there'll be a score track running around the outside here as it goes. I'm gonna, I'm just been writing it down on pencil. So I get five points. Whoever played the, the molly that led the party also gets a bonus two points. So I got five plus two, that's seven points. So I'm up to 19 actually for the game. So I did really well here. Now for the rookery, they just score whichever column is giving them the most points. Now, as it goes, uh, six and eights are worth three points, a five is worth two points, and that should say three to five is worth two points. Three to five is two points. So this column got two points, this column got three, this column got three. Whichever column got the maximum is their point. So they're just scoring three points from this. Okay. 
They were on 13, they're now up to 16 points. Brilliant. Now all the cards that successfully contributed towards a party, they go into a little discard pile called your reputation. And I'm going to come back to that shortly, but I've got three cards in my reputation now. I'm going to sit them here in a little fan shape. Okay, this is my player board with these little guilt tokens on. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Right, so that's my reputation. Similarly, each column in the rookery will have a reputation. So these cards go to their reputation. The molly here was a diamond, which means, and there's a little tracker over here, diamonds are now going up in values. So there's one track for each suit. So that type, diamonds track has been pushed up a spot. Diamond cards in our reputation will be now be worth extra points at the end of the week. This molly now goes out into the streets of London and we roll a die and it's a three and there's numbered spots. One, two, three. This molly is going to sit over here at Mallard's Court. I did print out a map here so you can see what, what the play testers are currently using on Tabletop Simulator. So there's the number three spot over here, near Mallard's Court. All right. Okay, cool. That's a festivity. We've completed a festivity. I take this joker back into my hand. I can use it in the next party. All right. Now, in addition, when a festivity is completed, whoever played the most cards, which is me, was three, we draw that many cards for a constable check. Did we get found out? So we draw three cards from the top of the deck. And if any of them are constables, they weren't actually. So these just get drawn, discarded. And if any were constables, then We'll be doing a constable check. Actually, we'll come to that in a little bit. Let me let me push on. That's how a festivity is played in the solo game. These pass cards now disappear. All right, and that was my turn. I played a molly. What, what happens on open play then? So that's the festivity concluded. Um, it's the rookery's turn, starting at the left. Well, this is where this AI deck comes in. Let's give it a shuffle up and I'll show you how this AI deck drives their behaviour. There's a simple one page reference that shows you what each action will do. And it's, it looks wordy because I've replicated all the words from the rule book here, um, from the multiplayer rule book as well, just so you know how each action is played out. But basically, we draw an AI card and the card is split into two types. There's midweek and weekend. We're currently in the midweek stage of the game. There's a vice deck, which is kind of acting as a timer. This is where all the constables are hidden. 12 cards from the bottom is, and it's the weekend card. Once that card gets revealed, we switch the AI's behavior to the weekend section here. So as the week comes to an end, the AI will start to act like it's getting close to the weekend. They're gonna think about going home. And we'll look at that action briefly in a bit. But the AI is going to choose this action first. So column one is going to go for this action. Column two is going to go for this action. So the first action is for column one, they're going to go to Covent Garden, which is just here, and grab one of these four cards. And they're going to give priority to this one. So they're going to grab the eight. So they pull the card. In regular play, you pull a card from the market, you reveal it, and you replace it with a card from the top of the deck, which happens to be a constable. Covent Garden phase stops, we resolve the constable and then this card goes to the bottom of their column. Okay, so now there's an eight that can come and help with another party. Perhaps we do another six card run at some point. All right. But remember, we haven't got our two and our three and our four anymore. They, they are in our discard pile. So if we do try and do a six card run, at the moment we've got six, seven, eight. I've got nothing because my hand is empty. I need to go and grab some cards. It's not gonna be very easy. There's a two over here at the discard pile. There's a three and a two and a seven here in the market. Now, that's planning ahead, right? For now, we've revealed a constable. Remember I told you in my proxy deck here, tens and jacks are constables, but this is a constable of clubs. What that means is each player, which means the four columns of the rookery and me, must reveal their highest club, all right? If you don't have any, you don't have anything to reveal. If you're an informer, one of those traitors, if you're an informer, you can pretend not to have a club. But remember, if during at some point you've revealed a club and shown the other players that you've got a club in a multiplayer game, they're going to know 
they're going to know that you're lying. Okay, so look out for that. Okay, a club. If there were any clubs up here revealed, they would now show them. And whoever had the highest club would get arrested. Now, as it goes, this is the second time we've revealed a club constable. This is the second one. Remember, there's two constables in each suit. and We had one revealed. It just happened to be a club as well. In this case, you don't just reveal your highest. You reveal all the clubs in your hand. Again, nobody had any. But let's say they had a club here. They would reveal it. They'd get arrested. And then they would have to take a guilt token for every club they revealed and for every club in their discard pile, which is called their reputation. Luckily, I got rid of my two clubs. But if I had a club in my hand now, I'd have to have revealed that club plus these two from my reputation and taken three guilt tokens. Now, the guilt tokens have got point token, points values on them, and these are points scored at game end like minus three, minus four points, all right? So you're scoring points for parties and then losing points for guilt tokens. But some of these have an eye on them, an informer icon on them. If you draw one of these, you've got the option to either throw it back, you really go, oh, I drew an informer, or secretly keep it and become an informer, all right? The other option is if you want to, when you get arrested, you can just stick the revealed cards. If I had club and I got arrested I'd revealed the club plus these two from my reputation would then go to the gossip pile instead now that's not necessarily a bad thing threes are low twos are low fours are a high card but remember you want low cards in the gossip pile to counteract high cards in the gossip pile to prevent this track going up okay we'll look at that briefly in a minute just to qualify what I mean by that okay so these are my reputation. As it goes, no one had any clubs, so nobody got arrested, and that constable did nothing. They found out nothing about the Molly House. Cool. Right, that completed the Covent Garden action, which was a bit longer than usual because the constable got revealed. Then we go next. They're going to go cruising grounds. In cruising grounds, that's down here, this is when you can swap cards from your hand for new cards. In the solo game, the soloist gets to choose which card in this column they want to reveal. So let's say we don't like the look of this six. It, it, it was their, their turn. We might take this opportunity to discard it. As it goes, we've got two hidden cards. So I can choose to reveal this card or this card. But let's just reveal the bottom one. Okay, it's a five. This gets replaced with the top card of the vice deck. I peek at it, make sure it's not a constable. It's a molly. And then I place it face down here. So there's a little bit of a memory game here going on too. So I know this is a molly. But I've got, a, I've got a lot of cards here to try and remember. Two, four, six, seven, yeah. And this is an element of the multiplayer game too, because people are going to be revealing cards and putting them back in your hand, like they've just done here. You've got to try and remember who's got what. So I can try and remember there's a molly here, and that will help me. If I'm good at this game, remembering which cards are where. Then this card gets discarded, and that goes over here to the Thief Taker's Office discard. People can come here now and grab this card. So if I wanted this five, I could come here and get it. But another rookery column might come and get it because we're going to move on now. All right, we've done this for AI cards and we draw a new one. And then two, uh, column three is going to do this and column four is going to do this. Now column three is a molly house. They'd look now to see if they had any revealed mollies. They don't, so they're going to skip and do nothing. Next column is Axe Hotel and Coffee House. Axe Hotel and Coffee House. Now there's currently a, a patrol marker here, but the AI ignores patrol marker. They're just going to do the action anyway. This is a way of revealing cards from the bottom of their column and just filling their hands. So the fourth column is going to reveal cards until they reveal a card that has not been seen before, which is this one. So they've revealed two cards and then they draw that many cards. We can peek at it. It's a constable. So actually we're going to stop and check for a rest. Then if it wasn't a constable, they'd get to do another one and place it on the bottom of their deck. So this one didn't work out for them. But we've got a constable. Now it's hearts. Has anybody got any hearts showing? No. So if they had, we'd be arresting a player. It doesn't. So we've got a constable going off doing nothing. Then I can choose a soloist to put these cards back in any order I wish. And I'm going to choose to put them in this order. 
And that's it. That's the AI done back to me. And so the game goes on. All right. So the game goes on. Um, the idea really is that we're manipulating. So I could have put these back this way. So when they go to Axe Hotel and Coffee House, I can manipulate the bottom of their column. When they go to Cruising Grounds, I can choose to discard a card from their column. When they go to Covent Garden, they're just grabbing from the market and I've got little control over what they do at that point. Thief Taker's Office, I can choose which of these two cards I want them to take and it will go to the bottom of their column. So maybe if a rookery column went here, I could choose to take the two or the five. Maybe I'd take the five and decide to put it on the bottom of their column. St Andrew's Church, this is where they get to accuse us. Um, I'll come back to that in a second, but let's just have a look. As we're going through this deck, it becomes, it's the weekend. That's when potentially they're going home. And when you go home, you're basically saying, right, I'm done for the round. I'm not going to take any more actions. Um, once everybody, including us, has gone home, then we, we, we go to the end of the week and when we score for every card in our reputation. So I've got two clubs and a diamond. Clubs aren't worth anything right now. Diamonds are worth one point each. So at one point, they've got one diamond, one diamond, one club. So that's one point here, one point here, one point here. Again, they get the maximum number of points from one of their columns. So that's one extra point for the rookery when the week ends. So you've got to keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on which mollies are in play. Obviously, when a molly gets used and then more, you know, it goes back out onto the board, you can then go and court that molly, pick it up again. That's one of the actions at these locations. Call that molly, put it back in your hand, replay it. Remember, the cards that you used last time aren't available anymore. Okay, what else do I want to show you? Oh yeah, at the end of the week, when we gossip, any cards that are left in our hand, so we've got some cards in our hand, half of them, you can choose high, low, a mixture, what, whichever you want, depending on whether you're in former or not, and you want to mess with the game and try and force the house to close or try and keep it open. Highs and low cards, half your hand must go to the gossip pile. The rookery is going to do the same for each of their columns, and they're going to favour low cards. They're going to put half their hand favouring low cards in the gossip pile. Then you adjust this tracker, depending on whether there's more high or low in the gossip. The gossip cards go back into the discard. You recreate the discard pile, the vice deck, replace the weekend card. And then every card that was in your reputation comes back to your hand. All right, so you'll start the next week with whatever was discarded from the previous week. So my two, my three, and my four can start helping me again towards these mollies. Um, you do add a random molly to the vice deck, so the game does alter from round to round which mollies are in there. There'll be new mollies arriving, new different types of tricks to be played for, double three of a kind, a full house, so on, two, three pairs, all that kind of stuff. All right, so your reputation, these are cards that won't go into the gossip pile. So playing high cards are worth more points into, tr into tricks, and also they go to your reputation, which means they're not going to the gossip, you're keeping them safe, they're keeping the house open, and they come back to your hand. All right, so managing your hands is, and which cards you're playing is a huge part of this game. And in the solo game, you've got many more cards to try and manage. Yeah, so managing the rookery. That's what it's all about, managing these actions. And being careful to manage if you're an informer or not. So how does being an informer work? If the sim goes down to St Andrew's Church, the church is where you can go and redeem yourself and make up for your bad behaviour. St Andrew's Church. If the sim goes down to St Andrew's Church, they could potentially accuse you of being an informer. So let's say that I had a bunch of cards. <clears throat> let's say I had these cards revealed um, and then some other cards hidden. Let's just put the market cards in hidden. Okay. So my hand looks like this, revealed, hidden. Okay. If I were an informer, I'd have an eye in one of these face down stacks. Okay. These will be wooden tokens in the final game. You can only have one informer, and it'll be sitting in one of these stacks. Now, other players have to kind of guess in a multiplayer game, guess which stack. So here you've got a one in four chance of actually being found out if somebody chooses to accuse you. The way this works in the solo game, it comes to how you manage 
your hidden and revealed cards. Which choose, cards you choose to reveal says something about who you are. If I'm revealing more low cards than high cards, then the the rookery doesn't think I'm an informer. Informers want to hold high cards and play them into gossip. Remember, four, high cards are fours plus, including mollies. Let's say I had more high cards than low cards, then I'm kind of looking like an informer. At this point, then, a rookery column going to St Andrew's Church would potentially accuse you. Then I would take one of these cold, one of these circle blue, they might be blue, one of these cold decision cards, and I'll flip it. In this case, it's high, it's a six. If this number were, le were less or equal to the number of hidden ca cards I had, okay, or hidden three, okay, revealed hidden. If it were less or equal to the number of hidden cards I had, then it wouldn't accuse me. It's unsure, it doesn't know, because I've got lots of hidden information. So the more cards I keep hidden, the less likely I am to get accused. The rookery doesn't know that much about my hand. Now, a good thing to do if you are an informer is keep high cards hidden over here because then you're fooling the rookery into thinking you're holding low cards, you're, you're not an informer. Keep your high cards hidden and then you can play them into gossip and potentially push the molly has towards closure. So let's just cover that rule and just in case you didn't understand what was going on. When we gossip, these are cards that end up in the gossip pile. You split them into two piles, highs and lows. If there's more lows than highs, which there is here, there's one more low than there is high, then this token goes left for one, okay? Now if there's more highs than lows, let's say there was this in gossip, there's one more high than there is low, then this goes right a space. And as it goes right, when it hits these points, the, these spots here, these higher valued guilt tokens go into the draw cup. And like I say, if it goes all the way here, then the Molly House closes, the game ends, and informers win, or have a, whichever informer has the most points. So you've got to, got to keep an eye on this. Do I want to be an informer? Hold on to one of these, or do I not want to be an informer? If the rookery successfully accuses you of being an informer then they will automatically pick and this will just have the rules currently where they'll automatically pick the stack with your informer token so you're controlling the odds of them picking you not by just a random one in four but by which cards you're revealing which cards you're hiding kept keeping hidden okay whether the high cards or low cards all right, so that's how this works and how this fan card works. So hopefully you'll enjoy that little bit of subterfuge that you can actually play against the rookery by choosing which cards you reveal and which ones you don't. It's pretty neat. And again, you can choose to accuse a column as well because each of the four rookery players, each of the four columns has its own player board, its own reputation, its own stack of guilt tokens that is going to be drawing as it's getting arrested. And that's it. That's uh, that's a very <laughs> brief. Oh, I say brief. I think the video has gone on long enough. But hopefully this is enough to give you an idea about how the solo game plays. The fact that you've got very swift turns. OK, these are very simple. There's no if then else stuff going on. It's just follow the actions, do a thing, either, either draw a card from a discard, from the market, from the, from the top of the deck or discard a card. But what you've got to understand, too, is that. You've got agency in what these rookery columns is doing. So you've got to try and manage these as you're making decisions for the AI about what, how the, like, you know, like the order of these cards going back and when it cruises, which card it discards in order to try and create a situation that parties work in your favour. Now, obviously here, for example, if I've got the rookery scoring lots of points off parties, I've got to try and keep ahead of the rookery by scoring points myself, which I managed to do by sniping with my with my two. All right, so there's all those kind of elements of you know sniping and keeping hidden cards, reveal which cards you reveal, when to accuse rookery, when not to. It's all there in the solo game, and and this is what Molly House is about. And obviously, 
development still ongoing and there's balancing to be done. I can balance these decks how I want, balance the AI cards how I want. So all that good stuff is ongoing. But yeah, in principle, this is exactly how um, how the solo is going to going to play out. Trying to manage these columns, it's great fun. It's, it makes it nice and nice and puzzly, just like the and kind of that cooperative feel in a solo game is. Yeah, I'm really pleased with how that's how that's come out. And Molly has a challenge, a semi cooperative kind of set collecting kind of mechanism in a solo game. Uh, it was a, it was a challenge. This has been one of the more difficult ones to kind of get that key idea. There's kind of two key ideas in here, really, which is managing those four columns and then having those behavior cards. I mean, I knew all along I wanted it to look like a five player game and I knew that I wanted these actions to be swift, you know, chunk, 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 back to the player. But even like I say, even when the AI is doing his these things, you've got agency in them. So you're making decisions and um, how you want the game to play, even when it is that very swift bot turn, uh, the rookery turns. All right, I think that's it. So I'm going to get back to working on it because, you know, there's there's bits to do on it. Keep playing. Uh, the playtest team have got this access to this now on TTS. And uh, yeah, lots of work to do to just keep on refining this solo design but hopefully you've enjoyed what i've shown you today thanks for watching see you next time